Okay, we are looking at lesson 6.4, rectangles. Okay, rectangles are, once again, if you look at that chart that we had at the beginning of the chapter, they are a type of parallelogram, and a parallelogram is a special type of a quadrilateral, so it's a four-sided figure. It's going to follow all of the parallelogram rules. Um, funky picture. It looks kind of curvy on the edges if you look at it from a distance, but truly it's all little rectangles. And you can see, if you look closer, it's kind of like pixelized in a way. There's no, no curves in that picture whatsoever. And I don't know if this is the uh, side view of a solar panels. I think it's actually an apartment building, windows, and solar panels. I don't know. But once again, lots of rectangles. If a parallelogram is a rectangle, then the diagonals are going to be congruent. Okay, so it's going to follow all the rules of a parallelogram, but we're also going to throw in diagonals have to be congruent. In a parallelogram, your diagonals are not congruent, because remember, you can have a long diagonal and a short diagonal. Um, okay, all of these deal with opposite sides are congruent and parallel. That's a parallelogram. Opposite, side, opposite angles are congruent is the rule of a parallelogram. These still apply. Consecutive angles are supplementary. You don't have to write this down. Okay? Consecutive angles are supplementary. That's also a rule in a parallelogram. Diagonals are congruent and bisect each other. This is something that you, you already have written down from the previous screen. Okay? Um, bisect each other is still true from the parallelogram. It's the part where the diagonals are congruent is due to rectangles. And all four angles are right angles. And that's kind of the one you learned way back in like fourth and fifth grade when you're being introduced to like rectangles. Okay, so these two, make sure you got those written down. Um, actually, we're going to put together a little, little study health guide for this because it's a lot of information. Okay, example one, quadrilateral RSTU is a rectangle. If RT, so this diagonal, is 6x plus 4, and SU, the other diagonal, is 7x minus 4, find the value of x. So if we're going to do that, <coughs> then I'm going to set these equal to each other, because if it's telling me it's a rectangle, then rectangles have diagonals that are congruent. All right, 6x uh, and 7x need to be combined together. Subtracting 7x. All right, now I'm going to add 4. Oh, this is weird. I got negative x equals 0. Did I do something wrong? <laughs> I did again. This is a plus. <sighs> this is a plus. So actually, I am going to subtract 4 for both sides. I get a negative 8x equals negative 8. <laughs> nice. Now x is going to be equal to 8. All right, now let me double check. 8 times 6 is 64. 6 times 8 is 48 plus 4. Is that the same as 7 times 8, which is 56, and subtract 4? This would give me 52, and this would give me 52. All right, so the diagonals are definitely congruent. Example 2, quadrilateral EFGH is a rectangle. Okay, so all those rectangle and parallelogram rules apply. If FH is 5x plus 4... And GE is 7x minus 6, find the value of x. And because this is so similar to example number 1, this is going to be kind of your little at home, do it yourself, see how you do. If you have questions, let me know. All right, I'm going to go on to the next one, but this one should be in your notes. Example 3, quadrilateral LMNP is a rectangle, find x. One of the first things I'm going to point out is special about a rectangle. Not only are the diagonals congruent, the other special rule is that your four angles are all going to be 90 degrees. So this is a big right angle there. So 5x plus 8 plus the 3x plus 2, those two have to total up to be 90 degrees. So 8x plus 10 equals 90. Subtract 10 for both sides, I get 8x equals 80. Divide both sides by 8, I get x equals 10. Okay. Um, interestingly, in my example here, it says find x, and, and as it say, I have to find y. However, I'm going to go ahead and do that, because you know you're probably going to get a problem that's a little tougher than just this. So if I put x in, x is um, 10, 10 times 5 is 50, so this is 58 degrees. 
All right, if I put 10 in here, I get 30 and then 32 and double check, 58 and 32 do add up to 90 degrees. Wonderful. And if you recall earlier, these are, this angle right here is going to be congruent to this angle right here due to the fact that we have parallel lines, they're alternate interior angles. So 6y plus 2 is equal to, well, 3x plus 2, but we know that that's 32 degrees. So 6y equals 30. So now y equals 5. All right, moving on. Example 4. Okay, look at we got an x squared in there. Oh, quadrilateral EFGH is a rectangle. <clears throat> Find the value of x. All right, so I'm looking at this angle right here and this angle right here which happen to be alternate interior angles, which means they're going to be congruent. So x squared plus 2 is equal to 14x minus 47. All right, you're like, how do I solve an x squared and an x? Huh. Here's what you're going to do. We're going to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 14x, okay, plus 2 equals negative 47. I probably don't need two steps here. And I'm also going to add 47 to both sides. Okay, so I'm going to get x squared minus 14x. If I add 47, I get a 49. Okay, this is what makes this section a little bit of a bear. We're going to have to either go back to A, factory, or B, quadratic formula. Do, 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 do. All right, that was really off pitch, sorry. <laughs> okay. The thing about factoring, it doesn't work all the time. Quadratic formula does work all the time. I'm going to show you both. Remain calm. We'll get it all figured out. You're just going to copy it down for now, and then we can go through. We'll see where you are and on your comfort level for either one of these, and we'll just keep working on it. All right, so we got this right here, a quadratic. And how do I know I have an x squared? And then I've thrown an x on top of that. Um, if we're factoring, which is usually the easier, if you feel comfortable, that's when you set down your two sets of parentheses. What times what gives you x squared? x and x. Okay, and then I look at this. What two things multiply give you 49? Not only 7 and 7, but also 1 and 49. But if you have factored with me, I always say start with the 7 and the 7. Okay, and I can't help but notice I need a positive 49, but I still need a negative 14. The only way I can do that is to get negatives. And by golly, you better double check. Okay, x times x is x squared, negative 7. This is foiling that I'm doing right now, by the way. 7 times x is negative 7x, and negative 7x again. And then I have a positive 49. <clears throat> if I just quick check, I have x squared minus 14x plus 49 equals 0. This is the same as this. So this is the correct factory. However, I have not solved yet. If I solve this, <clears throat> I get x is equal to, let's see, what minus 7 gives me 0? x is equal to 7. Okay, and the same thing would be here. I just don't write the answer 7 and 7 twice. I just say the answer is 7. Woo! All right. That's option 1. The next option is the quadratic formula option. <coughs> Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a, and that's the quadratic formula. What's the other one that I, um, x, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, either one that works for you. And if you don't remember, a is your coefficient of x squared B is your coefficient of x, and C is your, what's called a constant term, it's your low number there at the end. So, this is what you're going to use if you don't feel comfortable factoring. You're like, I'm going to feel comfortable factoring after all of that. All right, negative B. Well, B is already negative 14, so negative B would be 14. Plus or minus B squared, I think 14 squared is 196. Yeah, 196 minus 4 times the a value is 1, the c value is 49, divided by 2 times a, 2 times a. All right. 
So now, I'm going to figure out what is 4 times 49. I think it's going to be just a little less than 200. I think I'm going to have 14 plus or minus the square root of 196 minus, oh weird, is that 196? Oh my goodness. Well, 196 minus 196 is 0, so this part is actually gone. 14 divided by 2, 7, that's what I had over here too. Oh goodness. So, back to the problem. Um, the x value is, as we just discussed, 7. All right. <sighs> um, okay. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead. What is 7 times 14? 28, that's 98, uh, minus 47. I'm just figuring out what this angle is, by the way. This is 51. Does that seem right? goodness. All right, if that's 51 degrees, what do you think this angle has to be right here? Because these are going to be congruent. So these are like base angles of an isosceles triangle. So this also has to be 51 degrees. I've got a total of 90 degrees in this corner. So 90 minus 51 is going to be 39 degrees. So 39 is equal to 4y minus 5. So then I'm going to add 5. I get 44 is equal to 4y. Now if y is equal to 11. Boy, we've got math all over the place, don't we? Okay, I didn't say I had to find y, but I better show you. If the diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent, then the parallelogram is a rectangle. So this is like the redneck version. It's the converse, basically. Um, of saying if you have a rectangle and the diagonals are congruent, this is the opposite of that. Kyle is building a barn for his horse. He measures the diagonals of the door opening to make sure that they bisect each other and that they are congruent. So here we have this is going to be congruent to this and they bisect each other so it's like a parallelogram and it's a rectangle how does he know that each corner is 90 degrees? Well, if it's going to be a rectangle, then you're going to have this. Okay. <clears throat> Once your um, diagonals are congruent, then you know you have a rectangle. And, and you have to know it's a parallelogram as well. Example 6 is very similar here. I have the information to let you know that it's a parallelogram with the red markings here, just by looking at the picture. Max is building a swimming pool in his backyard. He measures the length and the width of the pool so that the opposite sides are parallel. Check. Parallelogram. He also measures the diagonals of the pool to make sure that they are congruent. How does he know that each corner is 90 degrees? This is like the same question. Oh my goodness. If the diagonals are congruent, then you have a rectangle. If you have a rectangle, then your angles are going to be 90 degrees. How is that training that thought there? Well, have a happy winter once again.